So now part two of the video series about building the helix antenna. We are going to use the pre-calculated parameters in the first video in a simulation software. The simulation software we are going to use is the ANSOF application. This ANSOF application has a free trial version which I'm using right now. Uh, I'm not sponsored in any way by this application. This is the only simulator that I found which provides a 3D visualization of the radiation pattern and which uh, seems easy enough to uh, be configured and to use. So uh, you just have to follow the different uh, tabs here as appearing on the screen from setting up the parameters, establishing the uh, geometry of your antenna. This is what is, is called the workspace. So in this workspace, you can draw lines, arcs, circles, helix, etc. So in this case, we will build obviously an helix. You have then the configuration of the tuner, which is feeding your antenna. You can configure the feed line, which is called the feeder in this case. And then you can visualize the results either in a table form, either as we will uh, see a little bit later in a 3D uh, pattern way or uh, 2D cuts in the radiation pattern. So we have to start setting up the frequency we are going to use. So in this case, it's obviously 870 megahertz. It will calculate automatically the wavelength. Uh, for the environment, uh, we can choose uh, no environment at all, a perfect uh, environment, or a real environment of the ground plane consisting of some materials with some characteristics. Uh, here, for the simplicity of it, I'm just going to select a perfect ground plane, which I will position at, uh, the, along the z-axis at the zero position. But we will set up the end of the spiral of the helix at about, zero, uh, at about three millimeters above the ground plane. So the ground plane will be, because that's, this corresponds to the practical uh, solder point, uh, when we will uh, insert the coax cable on the back of the ground plane, we will just have uh, three millimeters of wire sticking out on which the helix will be soldered on. So I will not change any other parameters on that screen. So that's for the setup. Then for the workspace, we are going to right click and select Helix. Then we have the parameterization of the Helix itself. There are two ways to define the Helix. I will keep the um, template where you just define the uh, radius, the pitch of the turns and the number of turns. We will start at uh, three millimeters away uh, from the ground plane and the radius, we will get the information back that we have configured uh, previously. So we add a radius of 6.15 centimeters. So we enter here 6.15 centimeters. For the pitch, what did we have? For the pitch, we had 8.77 centimeters. So let's type in 877 centimeters and five turns. Then the orientation is uh, straight up with the helix along the z-axis. We don't change anything on that tab. So the number of segments in the free version is limited to maximum 50. The number of segments is the approximation of the circles made with the number of segments per turn. Uh, here we are above 50, so I would not be able to use the free version, so I have to set it lower below 50. The cross section is obviously circular and the uh, radius of the wire itself, I intend to use a wire of 1.8 millimeters uh, diameters, so 0 0.9 millimeters for the radius of the wire. That's the practical diameter of a simple electrical wire that you can find easily in shops. The material is gonna be copper, and no wire coating, so I don't, leave, I don't touch these parameters, I leave them as, as they are. Okay, so we have now configured the helix, we click on OK, and we see a representation 
of the helix itself. That's how it looks like as modeled by the software. I can uh, put it a little bit bigger on screen. There we go. So we have the, the basis. You see here on the bottom left corner the representation of the three axes. And if you click on the 3D rotation uh, visualization button up there, you are able to move around these axes to visualize your uh, antenna as you modeled it. All right. So what we have to do is add a power source to the antenna. Uh, to do this, you select the spiral itself, you right click and you click on add the little symbol add source load. You click on that and here at the bottom left you see the different choices. You can add a wire line, you can add a load and I will select the source symbol and that uh, dialog pops up allowing you to define the voltage uh, of your power source. I will leave it at one volt and I will leave the impedance as it is. All right, I click on OK. OK, I still have to add the ground um, on this uh, antenna. I will add it at the start point and I will actually add it on zero at position zero centimeters on the Z axis. and it will end up at 0 0.3 millimeters up. OK. I have to add the cross-section radius of the copper wire, which will be the same. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. So we have added a ground. I will actually remove the power source here. And actually, I will add the power source between the ground and the helix. So to do this, you right click on the segment where the source is going to inject the power into the antenna. That's the beginning of the helix. And you select the plus symbol to add the source there. You select the source symbol on the bottom left corner and I will leave the default values one volt. There we go. So the power source of the helix is now at the base of the helix as we can see here, modeled on screen. We now have a defined helix antenna and we can select the button to run all of the radiation pattern calculation. It has done it for the single frequency 870 MHz. So it has done that very quickly and we can immediately click on this button to visualize the radiation pattern. And here we go. I will put it full screen. I will put it down here. We see that we have indeed a natural mode of the antenna with a radiation lobe which extends along the z-axis of the helix antenna. So that's exactly what we wanted. We also see uh, secondary side lobes here on the bottom. The side lobes are inevitable uh, and are due to the diameter of the helix. The higher and closer the diameter of the helix is to the wavelength, the more uh, side lobes you will get. So actually to reduce the side lobes, we could uh, use an helix which has a 0 0.8 diameter uh, in relation to the wavelength. But uh, then we don't have uh, the, the most gain. So the most gain is um, reached by a higher uh, ratio between the diameter and the uh, wavelength. Here, um, if I'm not wrong, we selected 1.12, a ratio of 1.12. So we have a diameter of the helix, which is 1.12 the wavelength. We see the scale uh, here on the right of the color coding. So the red means the highest gain, the blue means the lowest gain, and we can actually ask it to plot the gain. So here we see uh, the gain of this antenna color coded. And we see that the maximum gain with these parameters is, you see that on the top 
left uh, corner is 9.7 dBi. That's the red zone here. We see it's quite uniform in the XY plane, which is, which is what we want. And it extends along the Z axis. Okay, that looks good. But uh, here we have uh, simply the radiation pattern. We also would like to look at the results to check what it's going to give in terms of impedance and uh, VSWR. So we see the typical uh, resistance of 140 ohm for um, an actual mode helix antenna. That is expected. This is typically what you get uh, when you design an actual antenna uh, on helix antenna uh, rather working in actual mode. So that's pretty good. But we see the VS, VSWR not so good, obviously, because it is not matched to 50 ohm. And the VSWR is uh, calculated uh, for uh, resistance, a pure resistance with no reactance and a pure resistance at 50 ohm. So that means that, uh, as I said in a previous video, that we will need to build uh, an impedance matching. And how do we do this? If I take the modeling of the antenna and I zoom on the bottom of the antenna, the beginning of the first spiral, we will have to stick a little copper triangle to solder a little uh, copper triangle at the base of the first spiral. And with trial and error with different sizes, we will have to match the impedance to 50 ohms. Okay, so here we've shown the modeling, the simulation and the modeling of an antenna at a precise frequency of 870 MHz, which gave quite already good parameters, but we could sweep a range of frequencies. To do this, we go here on the top left uh, corner in the Setup tab, and instead of selecting a single frequency, we can select Sweep. And we give the start frequency, the stop frequency and the step so the number of frequencies that we want to test between the start and stop frequencies. Here I put 1 MHz. So if I do this, it's going to take a little bit longer to calculate all of the fields. So here it is running. It is done. We can click on OK. And there in the results, we get then a table with all of the results per frequency between the minimum and maximum. Uh, we see the evolution in the resistance, the reactance, the VSWR, uh, etc. Gain and efficiency. And what is nice is that we can plot also the results as we did previously. I will go full screen. I will increase zoom a little bit on it. But here we have then a drop down box where we can select the visualization for each specific frequency that we wanted to try. If we go back to the table mode, we see that it is quite a broad range antenna actually, because the VSWR doesn't change much. If we visualize the curve of the VSWR versus frequency, we see that we have an helix which is indeed centered not exactly on 870 megahertz, but which has the best VSWR more between 868 and 869 megahertz. So that's uh, quite nice. I will maximize here the screen of the VSWR uh, chart. And we see that we have an helix antenna which is correctly centered on the at least the European frequency range for mesh testing. All right. We can also visualize with this simulation software a 2D cut in the 3D pattern. This is in the XY plane. Well, that's a circle, no surprise here. And we can visualize this also in the vertical plane. And we see the side lobes of this antenna, as I said previously in the 3D pattern. And we see here the main lobe extending along the Z axis. All right, that's it for the simulation software. Uh, we are going now to have to build this antenna. So I will first close this uh, project here. And we have to build that antenna. We have to build that antenna with the dimensions uh, that we see here on screen. Uh, to do this, obviously, you don't do it manually by hand. You have to have, as I showed in the first video, these uh, 3D uh, printed elements, which will allow you to 
uh, build a spiral along the 3D printed guide, modeling guide, uh, as I call it. So to uh, print these 3D parts, uh, you can use the OpenSCAD software, as I show here on screen. And you have to download from Thingiverse the elix.scad file. So I show on screen the screen of Thingiverse where you can download the elix.scat file, which is this customizable elix uh, STL generation uh, file that you can use on OpenSCAD. And if, if you scroll down on this page, you will find the elix.scad file. This is what you need to download to be able then to open it in OpenCAD and to enter the parameters of your uh, spiral of your helix, so uh, what you want to print, which parts you want to print, the, polar the polarization right or left, the number of turns, the diameter of the helix, and the diameter of the copper wire, so that's basically the groove that will be uh, carved out of this cylinder, and the total length of your antenna. These are the fundamental dimensioning parameters you enter in this OpenSCAD software, which will generate in the end the STL file. So, and uh, you first start to click on the rendering. It's taking a while. And we see here the rendering it made of the 3D parts, the STL 3D parts you may print. This is obviously quite huge because this is more than 40 centimeters long and 12 centimeters in diameter. So that's quite a huge part. All right, once we have done this, we can uh, calculate the uh, mesh for the generation of the STL parts. That's the second step. That's taking a little bit more time, so I will take you back once this is done. We have finished the generation of the STL file. We have downloaded them. And then if we open the result in FreeCAD to visualize it, we see here that we have all parts required to assemble the helix antenna. So there you go, that's the end of this uh, video. What we've done in summary is first to make a simulation in a simulator software to check that the dimensioning of the helix corresponds to what we want in terms of radiation pattern, gain, and the functioning frequency of the antenna. Then we've shown with the OpenSCAD software how we can generate STL files as shown here on screen, to 3D print the guides to build your own antenna. To be honest, I'm not sure I'm going to make a third video to build this antenna because the size is huge. It's actually very difficult to print in this frequency band uh, with a normal 3D printer. Mine is limited to 20 centimeters high parts. Here we are more than the double of that. So to get the same kind of gain for a directional antenna, the conclusion that I have is that a spiral helix antenna is not the best you can do for mesh plastic. Actually, if you build a Yagi type antenna, uh, you would get as much gain, but with a much simpler antenna to build. So this might be the subject of a future video, how to build a Yagi antenna for the mesh plastic band. But for those of you who would like still uh, to try with an helix type antenna, you have all the elements now in hands to do it. And I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.